our time between Wyoming and, and outside uh, Park City, mm. Utah. Oh, you don't um, live here at all? No, 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 no. Did you used to? You, well, yeah, for sure. Had to. And in the moment that I... You know, that's part of why I, I stopped acting and started writing. Is, you know, I was on the show and watched Pregnant and... You know, Sense of anarchy. Yeah, yeah. Twelve banana on a cable show doesn't pay very well, and you start to do the math on that. And you think, <laughs> how am I going to pay for a family when I raise my kid here? You know, and so I just reached a point where I said, I'm going to tell my own stories. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of telling other people's. And so, I quit the show and wrote Sicario. That was your first script. My first feature. Yeah. Damn, pretty it's impressive. Amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it was. It, I always said I got a PhD in in writing as an actor and. <laughs> Because you had to read so many scripts? Or? Well, I read so many scripts, and, <coughs> and, you know, I coached actors for many years. I've probably made more money doing that than I did acting, oh. and spent a lot of time on set, and, you know, you can't ever be wrong in front of another director, and nobody wants an acting coach here anyway. Um, <laughs> so I had to really analyze, and I, and I worked on so many auditions for other people and myself, it just reached a point to where I just I saw, I saw the similar, and I understand it now that I... You know, I don't I, quite understand what you meant by you can't be wrong. If I am telling an actor oh. how to do something God. or a motivation for a character and I am wrong, <coughs> I'm the director... And that director's going to let you know. That's a real problem. You're off the set. Yeah, yeah, that's a real problem. Um, so I ended up earning you know, a fair amount of trust um, from, from those guys. Um, but it taught me a lot, and I wasn't afraid to ask questions. Like, why are you doing it this way? And, Hmm, I wonder how this is going to work. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. Sometimes it would work, and I'd you know, see the movie or whatever it is, and then I would analyze that, and then sometimes I would think it's not going to work, and I'd see the movie, and it didn't work. And, uh, and so I, you know, I consider that my, my PhD in screenwriting, you know, just being a journeyman in this business for so long. How long do you think that was? I mean, you know how long it is. How was it? I mean, it was 20 years. 20 um, and so when I sat down to write Sicario, you know, it, it, it was, there was a certain amount of petulance in that, you know, because I've been constrained to television, so I'm going to break all the rules, and there's no <laughs> exposition, and, and, you know, we're going to follow the, I'm never going to tell you what the plot is, uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to start the third act off by following the villain. But you don't Just think it's the villain, you think he's the protagonist the whole time, and I'm going to show you he's the villain, and you're going to realize the character that bothered you so much. And then I did things, you know, Alejandro's character doesn't arc um, at all by design, and neither does uh, and neither does Josh Brolin's character. The only character that arcs is Kate, who I don't allow. To, she's completely inactive in the whole thing. You know, she's the audience's eyes, and so I wanted the audience to feel the arc. And so, since I had, since number one, I never, I never expected anyone to make it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it gave me a lot of freedom to do yeah. whatever I wanted, to, to write it the way I wanted. Um, and uh, then when it worked, uh, it gave me a lot of freedom to feel that way about it. You know, I taught myself some good lessons. With Hell or High Water, um, you know, that story, for me, it, it, it plays with a lot of ideas. Again, I'm so fascinated with who's the protagonist, you know, who am I rooting for, and, and trying to let characters live in, live in the gray, you know, and, and let the hero do some really bad things, let the bad guy do some really good things, uh, and, and kind of, you know, really, as accurate a mirror for, for us, for the people as, as we can be, you know. I don't think I've ever met any purely good person, and I don't think I've ever met one that was purely evil, and so I try to let the characters, you know, have that same balance. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um... Did you, was all this writing done in Wyoming? Did you move? And then no, no. Uh, you know, I wrote the first three when I still lived here. When you say three, you know, counting the one you're editing Wind now. Wind River, the one yeah. I'm finishing. So I wrote them uh, you know, back and back and back. Uh, wow. All while here. Crammed in this little apartment. You know, I moved us. I was like, I'm quitting the show. We have no money. Uh, we got to sell everything and move out of our house into... So you asked to be written out of it because there was one more season after you left, right? 
there were many more seasons. Oh, there were? Yeah, I mean... Well, I thought the, you quit. The, I left after a season two. Thing. Oh. It was like a dispute of some kind, like a negotiation of some kind. And it, I had one idea about what I was worth. They had an entirely different <laughs> idea. You know what I so mean? often and, I run into that. Yeah, and so, you know, what most actors <laughs> do is they made it very easy for me, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, they take it because you're so fearful of being out of work, but I was more fearful of that being all I was, you know, because I had a kid coming, um, which really helped put things in perspective. Um, and 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 that panic, you know, influenced all these scripts, Hell or High Water, probably the most. Um, you know, dealing so much with the failures of fathers. Uh, and, um, yeah, so I told my wife, who bought me Final Draft, who maxed out a credit card, you know, who were so broke when I finally said, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and uh, yeah, we moved out of this house in the valley and into a 900 square foot apartment just off Sunset. No air conditioning with this freaking six month old. <laughs> it was hell. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Yeah. So um, you had no idea if you're going to make it or what was going to happen. I mean, have you I ever knew, sold a script? I know, yeah. but I, you know, I. I just wrote movies I wanted to go see that said things that mattered to me, and I, and I just figured, and I did it at a time when there seemed to be an appetite for that in, in movie making. There, this new thing, this independent financing, in the range that I write films, you know, in that 15 to 40 million dollar range, there suddenly was all of this investment money and no scripts, you know, and so I, I happened to, Coincidentally, come along at a time when there was a, a, you know, an appetite for what I write. Um, I guess. Uh -huh. had, had you been wanting to write for some time? I had wanted to tell stories. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. I had, yeah. you know, I had the the story of, of Alejandro in my head for quite some time. I just, I just never had any intention of actually writing it. I would just play the movie in my brain. You uh -huh. know, and. Uh, Alejandro and, uh, and in Sicario. Sicario. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hell or High Water was much more deliberate. It was it was a much more deliberate script. You know, talking about a lot of themes that, um, that I witnessed. A member of my family suffer through in an area where I'm from, uh, and and it was such a palpable thing that was happening in Texas at the time that I wrote it. Worst drought in hundred years. And, and these massive wildfires across West Texas, which had never, I'd never even heard of that, you know, never heard of it uh, growing up. Um, a drought that basically ran off over 10% of the cattle herd in Texas, it was putting families out of business, it had eaten along for, at that time, oil uh, was the only thing that was that was funding the economy, that was it. Um, when you grew up? No, when I wrote the script. Uh. I mean, oil, Texas is tethered to oil. Yeah. Um, it, it's its cash crop, um, and so the fortunes of Texas. You know how oil goes. So does. So does the Did you still have there. family there at that time? So you were kind of well aware of it, or just oh, very well aware. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very good friends and family there. And mm -hmm. my and my uncle uh, had just been forcibly retired from the U.S. Marshal Service, mm -hmm. um, huh. and he was, you know, his name is Parnell McNamara, and and Marcus, the character Marcus, was you know based on him. In fact. Um, I put Jeff in contact with Parnell, who's now the sheriff in McLennan County, where Waco is. Oh, wow. And, uh, you, you know, they spent a lot of time together. It was a, mm. yeah, it was a really authentic, I felt, an authentic performance. There's a great story where um, where Jeff Bridges uh, called my uncle and and he wanted to read through all these scenes with all the, you know, different police officers. And so um, he, had, uh, he had Parnell read the Marcus lines and they assigned deputies and the secretary over here. We got about six police officers, sheriff's deputies in there, and they to read through the script so we could hear the cadence of the way that people talk there. What a great um, thing. Yeah. Um, That's a good story. So, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, so you did, and you did that over the phone, or you did it there? You, over you the there? phone. Everyone, they, he called into his office. He put him on speaker and, <laughs> and did it. Um, yeah, so I was, trying to, I was trying to deal with a lot of things, and I was trying to, again, I was playing with the idea of structure of a screenplay, you know, um, even though it, 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 it turned out that the information in the, ed, in the final edit was leaked out a little bit sooner in the, in the original screenplay, you didn't know why they were robbing banks until, you know, the end of the second act. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I and, and it may still be that way. I'd have to go back and watch a film. It's yeah, very it's well like it into is. the quite film. It's quite a long way in. And, it's quite I mean, delayed. It's you know, the reason for that is I wanted the audience to like these brothers and root for them in spite of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of feel their desperation and, uh, and see no hope in it and not really understand it. Um, and then, again, really root for Marcus and Alberto. And I try to make that really hard for you. you know, Marcus has a difficulty expressing his affection to this only friend that he has. And the way that he chooses to do it is, you know, through these racial insults, which is a really sad <laughs> it thing. It is sad, but it works. And, and, and it's... Uh, and it's so unusual to see it on the screen. Yeah, I mean, nice. I have a detective friend who does exactly that. I called him and told him he's got to go see the movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you know, and, and it highlights an issue. I mean, uh, everyone's aware that racism is that's a massive issue in the forefront, and it, and it takes a rethinking. And there's people that go, "Gosh, I'm not, I'm not racist." Well, what does that word yeah. mean? I mean, there's. It, it, if you say something that is offensive to someone based on their race, or are you, is that the sum of your whole being? And, and from my thinking, it's so easy to deny and defend if you're labeled this single thing, but if you can sit there and pinpoint, hey, there's some pretty good people that can say and do some pretty bad things, and if you can isolate it down to the bad thing and let them look at it, then maybe, you know, preaching to the choir does no good. Yeah. Um, but if you can actually you know, showcase something, if someone's able to see that and recognize their own behavior in that, but I didn't realize it's so hurtful, you know, I thought it was funny, but you sure didn't, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I, I just tried to, you know, I don't, I, I've said it a number of times and I really, I, I tried very hard not to preach and, and to, you know, just kind of hold the mirror up, let people make their own judgments, and I've always felt like... You know, if someone can figure out your politics as a writer, you kind of fail unless you're a political uh, writer. There you go. Um, so yeah, uh, being kind of relegated to the very limiting structure of television for so many years, um, I've kind of you know, childlessly rebelled against it uh, in my screenplay writing. You know, I try to find ways to mess with structure and perspective. And, I'm rooting for him. I'm just making sure this thing is working. The, the lack of, of uh, exposition, too, compared to the uh, police procedurals. It's sort of like I'm, the direct opposite uh, of it. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm allergic to exposition. Yeah, yeah, that's so Well, that was, that's what I like about your writing. I well, mean, you're not spelling it out at all. I mean, I didn't know where we were going in Sicario. You know, that was really interesting to me that suddenly we... We're following him out to the tunnel and what? Right. And, and you know, yeah. it was really interesting. And then the way he had to kill those, that, well, he did kill that family. It was fascinating the way he did. Well, it was very well performed, as you will gather. No. Are you in that? Do you make a cameo in that I do one? Not, no. Yeah. Why did you no. decide to do it in Hell or High Water? Because they couldn't find an actor who could ride a horse and talk. <laughs> <laughs> they, they could find him that could do one of the two. But it was a great, great moment. David, was like, David was like, buddy, you're killing me. You got to, you know, you wrote it, you come do it. <laughs> and so I did. Were well, you on the set very much? I, I was on the set quite a bit. Uh, um, I was there a lot during prep. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, David was extremely protective of, of the script, uh, extremely protective of the script, which, which for a writer, when you turn over your, you know, you turn over your baby, it, it, you know, it's a real kind of vulnerable thing. Um, but that's why when you're like, send me an earlier draft, I'm like, hey, we shot the, my first that draft. It. That was yeah. it. Like, I, I, I finished the screenplay, I hit send to my agents, they sent it to Pete Berg, and off it went. And, you know, so we went in and put in scene numbers. <laughs> Wow. The film is about American foreign policy in, in, in a macro, and it's about inequity, and, it's a, and, and, and so is, it's not about foreign policy, but so is Hell or High Water. I mean, they're exploring the American frontier 100 years later um, and how much they haven't, haven't changed.